I know a great example. If you get a chance to watch this, you need to be careful. I will say this. Anyone know the show Singing with the Enemy? Typical. There's BBC Three for you. None of you have heard it. It was a great show for one example I want to share with you because I think this, this brought out for me. You've got to be careful. If you ever see it and want to watch it, I'll explain why in a second. There was two bands put together. They used to do this. It's like a reality show-ish, but it's kind of more like a documentary. They would take two radically opposed musical groups and put them together in a house for a week and film them interacting. And at the end of the week, they had to write a song together. And they put once a bunch of rappers with a really sort of theatrical kind of guy with big red hair who sung or something or other and watch them just interact to see what happened. And the show that really caught me was this one. This band here are called Dweeb, Christian rock band. This band here, and I'm going to say this once, all right, called Paparazzi Hall. Dweeb are a Christian rock band. Paparazzi are a lesbian progressive punk band. <coughs> So picture this as they go into the house. Dweeb going, fir Dweeb going first. They walk in the house. There's a pole in the middle of the living room. There's a pole in the middle of the living room. Oh, that's what walk around the house does. Paparazzi arrive. The pole is for the backing singer to dance on. The backing singer is the lover of the lead singer who's married to the guitarist. Can we just run that way one more time? Backing singer is the lover of the lead singer who's married to the guitarist in paparazzi. So we watch, I watch this with like, whoa, where's this going to go? And at first, there's this argument on everything. Paparazzi are throwing questions out. We are led by a guy called Tim Alford. He's a young man who I respect immensely because he says, look, you choose to live your life the way you choose to. I just know there's, there's better ways to live your life. That's all I'm going to say. As they throw this stuff at him. And they're trying to trip him up. You can tell doing. Eventually they, take, they go to each other's gigs. So they go to the paparazzi gig. And at the paparazzi gig, we were watching them do their stuff. And about five minutes in, the strippers come. The dweeb guys just go back to the bar. And then the strippers and the lead singer start to do stuff you don't want to see. And dweeb just walk out. And in the car, on the way back, they film paparazzi talking. And the lead singer of paparazzi says to them all, isn't it ridiculous when people can't face up? What's wrong with it? Can't face up to their fears. You don't run away from fears. You face them. You need to stay there and watch. And the backing singer, her lover, says, you know what, I'm not so sure. I really respect what they just did. People don't stand up for what they believe anymore. They say it, but they don't live it out. And those guys believe in what they said. They go to a dweeb gig. And she gets saved. Hallelujah. The backing singer says the most stupid thing I've ever heard on telly. So they felt a real spiritual rush in my heart chakra. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if you only knew what just happened to you. Now, I say she's saved. She then spoke to Tim Alford about Jesus. He shared the gospel with her. And she went off and she left the band. They were faithfully present with him. They didn't sit there and say, you're just so disgusting, I can't stand to look at you anymore. What you're doing is just absolutely wrong, you need to sort it out. They just stuck to being faithfully present with him and loving them in a way that just spoke to me so much, as it's doing right now. That's a challenge, that's an extreme example, I think, but it's an extreme example I want to use of just the sort of thing I'm trying to say here. When you want to engage with culture, there's a different way in which we look at it from perhaps the way we used to. And that is to be faithfully present within. That is to sit inside culture, inside difficult situations, and just be sort of like, be love, be Jesus for people. Okay, so I'm going to try and conclude, which is probably the hardest thing to do now. A little bit of a mess. Um, there's two expressions I'd love you to walk away from from all of this. And it's just this, nothing more complicated in many ways. In today's culture, our job is to contend, that means for the gospel, that means fight for the truth in which we hold so dear. Keep hold of it, do not compromise it. Defend the ancient truth that Jesus Christ saves. All of this is going to come back to 
Jesus Christ. He saves through his sacrifice and contextualise it so we can communicate that truth. That's all we're trying to say. Sounds simple, but it's quite deep in many ways of how do we do that. The reason I said at the beginning, two things I did at the beginning, one is I went in that really fast kind of blur, here's what I'm going to tell you thing, was just to highlight the fact that in many ways in our culture, that's the one which people like to receive information, so the change of communication language. 30 seconds, you've got me, I'll listen to you now. That's why I did that thing at the beginning. The other thing was, well maybe you thought that, maybe you didn't, but that's the point I'm trying to make. The other thing is, I said that it was possibly unchristlike quite boldly, not to think about culture changing and how we engage with it. The reason I said that is because Jesus Christ was born in context. He was a Jewish man, a worker. He was born into that culture, the right time, the right person for the right, that culture. And then he learned the scriptures, he grows, and he was absolutely in context at that moment. So I had a question that I was going to pose, which is, if Jesus Christ was born today, what do you think he would be? Where would he be? What would he do? There would be some difference. But Jesus was in context for the time in which he was born. He was relevant to that moment. Because the human race had to recognise him as a human, as a person, to realise the absolute truth of the reason why he was saved. That he would go to the cross, take our sins upon his shoulders, and be, we would be saved through that. So, I hope... In some way, if you've not been challenged by me, you've been challenged by some of the information that I've shared, then in some way this will help appreciate why we talk so much about what change. It isn't here because we're trying to be hit funky cool and get the latest X, Y, Z going on. It's because we appreciate that we're a church that needs to engage with our culture to see the lost saved. That's what we're trying to achieve. Okay. Amen. Thank you all. Um, we have refreshments afterwards. I remember saying something when I, when I spoke that first message that I think for what God's going to do amongst us as a church, the people with the greatest vision and the people that I am looking to the most are those who may have to say, our time has passed. They're going to do things for a different generation. Because I tell you what, the, des the generation that's going to come through these doors is desperate, desperate to be loved by mothers and fathers because they don't have it. And that is still my challenge, that for some of you who are, we love our own generation, that's just natural human uh, kind of uh, tendencies, but for those of you who are saying, I don't know how to do this, you do. Just love them when they come in, and at least hear their language, you probably can't speak it back, just love them when they come through the doors, because that, that's what they're desperately looking for. So that's my challenge, that's my, you know, and uh, I feel, gosh, just hit, because I realize that I'm, I'm not, even, not even anywhere near, but we do want to change people's lives to see God transform them. So that's what we're about, and it is all about the gospel, no matter what you're thinking. That's what we're about. So we're excited, and uh, yeah, just looking forward to it. So let's enjoy teas and coffees together. Um, get tickets for the uh, quiz night if you haven't got them yet. Bring some people along. And uh, last week, next week is the